Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in TNO in the post Tabaritsky Holy Russian Empire Warlord Era in which I've already done the free Kazakh clans if you'd like to check them out for their events first link in the description below but in this video, you can see from the title and the thumbnail we are going to look at the Ural P pass purification zone. The collapse of the Holy Russian Empire left many stranded Strumoviki and Imperial Army units stranded around Russia, and the forces under Yuri Avtukovich are no exception, stranded and cut off from the main Imperial remnant in Vyatka by a hateful trans Ural confederation in the Kipchak Free State. Seeing weakness in the newly established Free State, Avtukovich's forces, made up of the 2nd Imperial Guard Division and several reserve divisions made up of irregular Strumovic auxiliaries, have plunged into war once more, seeing to restore Imperial control over the steppes, and finally purging the steppe peoples that have re reveled or revealed their hand once more. And we'll have a little bit of lag, and we become them. Very cool, and a very, very nice lad, led by good old Yuri, and he has a national spirit, the Horseman's Ride, the Fourth Seal. Yuri Avtukovich stood atop the small hill, quietly hyperventilating. His bloodshot eyes were locked on the pistol grip in his hand. It was an ugly thing, only good for uh, removing people. When it wasn't removing people, it was just a useless, impotent hunk of steel. Useless, impotent, unless... Commander Avtukovich, did you hear me? One of the men assembled behind him spoke. I asked what our new orders were now that we've lost touch with the capital. One of Yuri's eyes twitched. He spun around, and before he could even recognize the man who'd spoken, he'd raised a pistol and fired. The officer cried out as he crumpled to the dirt. His comrades lit out shouts of fear and dove out of the way, but Yuri couldn't have cared less about them. He fired again and again at the man on the ground, emptying the clip into his gut, his chest, and his head. Yuri threw the pistol aside and knelt down to take a look at the corpse. From what was left of the face, he could tell who it was. It was actually Fedorov. He'd always been a good officer, ruthless, efficient, untroubled by false morality. Yuri would have never guessed that he was such a treasonous lizard, but here he was. He stood up and walked and looked at the other Strumoviki officers cowing in the mud, awaiting the next move, or his next move. His eyes passed over each of them one by one. How bad word dare you, he rasped. New orders? Why the bad word would we need new orders? The region's order still stands. Why would it have been rescinded? It is our order to cleanse these mountains of every last gosh darn subhuman rodent hiding in them, and that order will stand clear, or stand, until we hear otherwise. Is it absolutely clear? The officers all nodded. Too afraid to speak, Yuri picked up the pistol and inserted a fresh clip into it. In a certain light, it had, salt, had a sort of brutal beauty to it. He turned back to the cowering man. You're all relieved of command, and unfortunately for all the warlords, for once the Holy Russian Empire collapses, we do not have a focus tree at all. Which kind of sucks, but it's alright. We do have two um, factories, though. And we are using the Burgundian system here. Hmm. It's very heartwarming, but a pale horse. The city center was packed with soldiers, though to call them an army would be generous, looking around himself. Alexander saw most of the men wore tattered uniforms. They were too skinny. Even the Shmoviki, entitled to better treatment than the common soldiers, looked like walking corpses in their dark uniforms. Exox Exhaustion hung thick in the air. They all knew the end was coming. They were here to find out what that form it would take. At the front of the square, a stage had been assembled. A single figure now climbed atop it, and murmuring crowd fell silent. Yuri Avtukovich, commander of the Imperial forces in the region, looked out over his legion. As his eyes passed over Alexander's section of the crowd, Alexander flinched. Avtukovich raised the bullhorn as he said. He held and began. Godsman has been brought to my attention that there are disloyal elements among their numbers. These godless traitors have questioned the authority of the regent, and through him the authority of the Tsarevich and God Almighty. The heretics have been disposed of, but I feel compelled to remind you of your oaths and the punishment for breaking them. You are sworn to obey all orders without question. Without question, compliance is not enough. To doubt your own orders is to doubt God, to doubt the regent. The commander paused for a moment to pull out a piece of paper before resuming. Our last order was to secure the Euros in the name of the Tsarevich. If we have not received new orders, it is because the Euros are not yet secure. The inhuman Jews and their Tartar dogs still infest this land. Our task is not yet complete, and we cannot rest until it is. Men of the Imperial Guard, are you prepared to see your order through? Are you ready to die and to kill without hesitation in the purification of your holy motherland? There was a roar of approval from the crowd. A cacophony of applause drowned out everything else. Alexander joined him. The soldiers around him were whooping and screaming with joy, but behind Behind their eyes, he could see the same feeling running through himself. Doom. Oh boy. Kazumbeka. Kazumbeka has got quite a bit of support here. And people are learning how to read much more quickly. And getting better with industrial equipment, but a rider named Death. 
Everything hurt. Constantine's legs hurt. His feet hurt more than anything. His lungs were burning as they struggled to pump enough air into his body. This was worse than combat. At least in combat, he could fight back. Here, his only option was to run as fast as he could. He was close, but there couldn't be much time left. He passed the 9-kilometer mark, and the desiccated trees were already starting to thin out as he nudged or neared the edge of the forest, but they had only been given 45 minutes. The 10 kilometers in 45 minutes, three quarters of an hour to run a path straight through a forest that artillery corps used for target practice. The starting pistol fired at 11, and it was 11.45. And at 11.45, the trucks waiting on the other side of the woods would depart, bringing anyone who was finished by then with them. At 11.46, the shells would start falling. The gunners were practically practicing with mustard gas today. Constantine hadn't believed it at first. It was a scare tactic to motivate them to go faster, or weed out anyone that didn't have the guts to to be in the Strumoviki. He'd been dispelled of, his, dispelled of that notion as soon as he got a good look at the forest. His lungs pumped faster, summoning a fountain reserve of strength he didn't know he'd had. The burn, rotten hulks of trees became a blur as he flew past them. He hurled it over a fetid pool of water with an unidentified corpse floating in it in a single leap. He rounded a corner and beheld the most beautiful thing, beautiful thing he'd ever seen. The edge of the trail, and there a few meters further, Five idling trucks with a few guards standing around them. He launched himself forwards and barreled out of the forest at last. The guards golfed as he staggered to a stop. That's 45. Looks like he's the last one, the sergeant said as Constantine climbed into the back of one of the trucks, taking a seat next to a few of the other soldiers who'd finished ahead of him. The truck surged into motion and started pulling away. He heard the gurgling of sound of gas gels passing overhead and the crumpling sounds of them impacting behind him. He saw a golden fog start to creep out of the receding trees. He didn't hear the screams, though. Oh, if only he had stayed and heard the screams, or even made some of his own. Hmm. Oh, Yuri. Yuri, Yuri, Yuri. If you'd like to read about Yuri, please go right ahead. You can pause the video, of course. And Heck followed him. Yuri Avtukovich disembarked from his command car and strode towards a circle of wagons. There were 23 in total, and behind him, over 100 humanoid mongrels and traitorous deserters had taken shelter from his men. Reconnaissance reported that they had been heavily armed and alert, and would have been a difficult target for the infantry to hit. Luckily, there was no need to send in the troops. The Imperial Guard saw plenty of toys stowed away. They didn't have to spend lives attacking these rodents in their burrow, not when a little white phosphorus would flush them all out. The stench of garlic that fosters attacks always brought still hung in the air, even hours later. As the command of the purification zone stepped through the improvised wall of wagons, he got his first look at what his orders had wrought. Twisted corpses scattered like dolls around the campsite. Some were splayed out, clawed at or clawing at the poison earth. Others huddled around each other, even in death. The last remains of the degenerate families that had tried to flee his army. All were covered in the same burns that white phosphorus left. Deep scorch marks covering the entire body. Skin so charred became brittle, paper-like. Avtukovich felt nauseous. He hated garlic. He was looking at the remains of what had once been a baby, cradled in his mother's arms, when he noticed one of the Strumoviki officers approaching him. We rounded up the survivors, sir. We're preparing to execute them now, with your permission. Avtukovich paused for a moment, as though he were contemplating some profound statement before speaking. Hold off for now. Bring them back to the camp with us so we can get some use out of them. The officer snapped a smart salute and departed. Avtukovich turned back towards the body he'd been studying. It couldn't have been more than a year old, such a little thing, and yet it had threatened everything he was fighting for, everything he loved. There was no other choice, there was no other choice. I do what I must because I can. We do have two army XP, huh? Not bad. By sword, famine and plague. Alexander found himself marching again, his rifle in hand, and his comrades around him, moving in lockstep towards the center of the city. If anyone asked him how he got here, he could have not told them. Life hadn't made sense for weeks, maybe years. He went where he was told to go, ate when, and what he was told to eat, and killed whoever he was told to kill, knowing that if he did said no, he was the next one in line. Nothing seemed connected anymore, just moment after moment with no context but the dread he couldn't escape. The, frank, the rank in front of him came to a halt, and Alexander did the same whenever, wherever they were going, they had arrived. At the front of the column, they could see a gallows. There were around a dozen kneeling figures, hoods over their heads, and nooses around their necks, in front of them. The commander was pacing back and forth as the Strumoviki and the guardsmen assembled in perfect order. Around the soldiers, a crowd of civilians had been assembled, brought to watch that what Alexander now remembered was a victory parade. Evtokovich raised a bullhorn and began shouting into it, People of Holy Russia, you've been brought here today to see the face of the enemy. This is the enemy which infests our motherland, conspiring to pollute our blood and deny us our God. This is the enemy, which the brave men of the guard, the warriors of the Holy Regent, and the blessed Tsarevich will purge from our country no matter the cost. Look at this vermin. With that, he tore off the hood of one of the prisoners, revealing a Tatar woman gaggled with a rough cord. Even from the distance, Alexander could see the burns that covered her face, hear the muffled screams, and sobs coming from behind the gag. 
of Tukovic went down the line ripping off the sacks. Each time he did so, a wave of jeers and shouts came from the crowd. Once they'd all been unmasked, Tukovic gave the signal to the hangman and the trap door dropped. As the bodies twitched and jerked, he raised the bullhorn one more time when the soldiers applauded, the first of millions. But unfortunately, that is the end of the events for the Ural Purification Zone. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link if you haven't already in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we explore more Warlords or do other videos. Thanks for watching, have a great, great rest of your day.